Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Before I forget, happy Thanksgiving, because I have this bad habit of getting into a roll of things and I forget the, to wish everyone the important stuff. So happy Thanksgiving. May God's blessing fill you and guide you as you celebrate, as you join together, as we come together in worship. As we remember our, our presbytery cycle of prayer, please remember the congregation and leadership of St. Luke's and Knox Presbyterian Church in Finch. Now let's turn to our call to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I should do that there. There we go. <laughs> we are to come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come giving thanks to the blessings of heavenly parents for the air we breathe and the food that nourishes us. We come giving thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We are also thankful for the freedom that we have to be able to come together and worship the God of life in peace. We worship because God has risen among us and our worship is silent in our love and God. Amen. Please stand. Holy, holy. plow the fields and scatter.
dancing together in the rhythm of your life-giving words. You have given the birds of the air what they need to thrive and bless the animals that run and play in the forest all that they desire. The fish of the water swim with joy and team with life working together, caring for your creation. Your Holy Spirit fills us with the newness of life, breathing hope into each of our lives. God of unconditional love and amazing grace. Too often our hearts grumble for what we do not have. We look around us and see what others have. And we are like the Israelites in the Old Testament and cry out for what, what others have. We want to be just like everyone else. Our hearts and minds forget that we are to yearn for more of you in our lives. We are not always grateful for what you have given us. Our standards and our desires are more influenced by sin than by faith. Forgive us for not listening to your Holy Spirit and to your holy words, for focusing on our sins and fears instead of seeking your loving grace. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven and renewed. Jesus has sought us out and given us a new hope filled with grace. Let the love of Jesus and the relationship that he is inviting us into change us and bless us and change those around us. John writes in 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 to 14, these truths. I am writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong. And to the word and the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. At this time, let us pass the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. I invite us to join together our voices once again as we sing a hymn that we uh, learned a little bit during the summer called Speak, O Lord.
with your glory. Please be seated. Let us come before the Lord in prayer once again. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you know all the distractions that are calling into our hearts and minds and trying to tear, so, tear at our souls. Break through the noise in our lives so that we can truly listen to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Your words have been handed down from generation to generation and have spoken into the lives of our ancestors and will guide our great-great-grandchildren and beyond. Help us to receive this blessing and help us to be thankful for this gift that you have entrusted us with. We pray this in the name that has power to break the bonds that hold us back from life. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. A response of Psalm this morning comes from Psalm 90, verses 12 to 17. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Remember, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on our servants. <clears throat> Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad in all our days. Make us glad as the ten days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to the servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. Our uh, gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17. To twenty or to thirty-one, Kathy, would you like to come and lead us in this reading? As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. "Good teacher," he asked, "what must I do to inherit eternal life?" "Why do you call me good?" Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and father. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields, along with the persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Thanks be to God for this reading of his word.
This passage holds a special place in my, my heart. And it's not because it speaks to me in a certain way. That it holds a different place in my heart for that. But I remember I was preaching on this passage for the sermon one Sunday. And I decided to use this passage for the uh, Sunday school time. And so I'm going through and I'm almost doing, memorizing it word for word. And I'm going, and we get to the rich young man. He comes up, what must I inherit to, or what must I do to inherit eternal life? And the, one of the Sunday school kids, as I'm naming off what Kathy just read to us, as Jesus has said to this rich young man, she pipes up, what's adultery? I look at her, I look up at her mother. <laughs> Just seeing exactly, and it's interesting because she's like, so how are you gonna handle this? So I give, uh, I give a very general uh, description, and, she, and that's when two people, or a person who's married is doing stuff with someone else's, or someone else who's not married and they're that they shouldn't be doing, that's only supposed to be within the context of a married couple. And she goes, oh, I know that. <laughs> I always remember that. But it's interesting, as we come into this chapter, we have Jesus is again teaching, he is sharing the good news, and there's this, this young man who is rich, who is wealthy, who doesn't have to worry about much. Except he is worried about how, what must I do he's, to inherit eternal life. And it's, there's a question of whether he's worrying or he's just trying to make sure that he's got all his bases covered. That he's got everything in control and just making sure, double checking. I don't know if you've ever done that before. You're very confident that everything's going to go as you want, as, you, as you're planning out and it's Life seems to be uh, taking along just as you expect it to. And if there is a little bump in the road, you've got the power to be able to fix it. And Jesus goes and he names off all the things that this young man would be expecting him to say. Follow the Ten Commandments. Follow the law that God, or that God has given through Moses. Do everything that you have been taught. And the young man says, check, I got that. No words. And then Jesus goes, and this is the hard thing. This is the thing that many of us stumble on ourselves. Because it essentially says, You're not living a self-help life. It essentially says that it is not by your own strength. It is not by your own power, but that you need to have faith and trust in God. Jesus says to the young man, go sell all your riches Give them to the poor. And then come and follow me. Because it's interesting. When you have those riches, you have a certain amount of control. If you run into a problem, you don't have to depend on anyone else. As long as you can access your uh, bank app these days or go to the bank or write a check. But when you don't have that fallback, when things aren't working the way you expect them to work, and you don't have that recourse to go back and to cover the, the 
the problems, to fix the problems the way that you're used to, when you have to depend on someone else. And here Jesus is saying, come and depend on me, come and depend on God, not yourself. This is a problem for the rich young man and for many people. For one of the sort of the pillars of of society these days is whether it's your self-help, you can do things all by yourself, you don't need anybody else, you can fix yourself, or you can go and do whatever you want because it is all, all, everything you need is found within you. It is interesting, I'm reminded of Uh, Simon Garfunkel's song, I'm a rock, I'm an island. How many people ascribe to that? That they isolate themselves so much and they think that they can do everything that they need all by themselves. It is interesting because even on a social level, you can isolate yourself. Who here can live without breathing the air around us? Who here can live without the food that we eat? Who here can live without the water that we like to drink? That as they say, wets our whistle. We are dependent, whether we realize it or not. We are dependent on on the knowledge that everyone has that works together. We are dependent on God's blessing. But when we have everything we think we need, when we think we have that independence, as we grow up, we're encouraged to be independent, right? Right? And there's a certain aspect of growing up that 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 involves or is a certain uh, necessity to be independent. But we're never fully independent. Yet the more that we think that we are, the less thankful I think we are of God. Look, God, what I did. Look, God, I accomplished this. Instead of, thank you, God, for the opportunity, for the strengths, for the the skills. Thank you, God, for the people that have enriched my life, who have helped me to gain confidence. Thank you, God, for the opportunities that are all around me that I couldn't do, that I wouldn't have without you. Yet if our focus is fully on our own control, we don't thank God. We don't realize God's blessing that is all around us, that he has given to us. Too often we can take take for granted what God has given us. And we start to call it our own. We start to think of it as something that we can control and should control. Instead of being the stewards that God calls us to be way back in Genesis. God calls us to be good stewards of creation. That we are to work alongside God and you and care for the blessing that God has given to us. It is hard to be thankful when we do it all ourselves, when we just look to ourselves. But when we start to see God's hand at work, when we start to see the people around us who help to share the burden, when we start to see how God's blessing works not just in our own lives, but in each of our lives, 
when we start to see the importance of relationship, of community, when we start to see how God has interwoven our lives together, sometimes we don't even realize it, because if we're all in control, we're making the decisions for ourselves. And yet God's opened doors. We didn't use a battering ram to get through all of them. We'd be very tired if we did. I don't know if you've ever tried to forcibly enter a door. One is fun, trust me on this one. Two becomes costly. Especially if it's your own door and you have to replace it. Three or four. And five and six. Becomes very hard. And yet, God has opened more doors for each of us than we realize. When we come to this Thanksgiving, are we thankful for the blessings that God has given us? Do we see all, do we see even a portion of what God has done for us? The doors that have been opened, the opportunities that have been granted, the gifts of skill, the gifts of friends, the gifts of connection, the gift of love, the gift of hope, the gift of faithfulness. And for some of us, it's even the gift of perseverance. Whether we ourselves have had to be, had to persevere, or God has persevered after us because we're a little bit stubborn. I don't know if anyone's stubborn here. You don't have to put up your hand. passage here to fall for the rich man to sell everything would have been hard because he's giving up the identity that he's grown accustomed to he's giving up the resources that he has he's giving up his freedom and yet if he was to give up that freedom, those resources, he'd, get, he'd be gaining so much more. He'd be gaining a relationship with God that opens more doors, that leads us into a deeper sense of life, a deeper connectivity with creation and with the people around us. Entering in and trusting in the promises of God. And not just in the promises that we can keep for ourselves. Changes how we see our own lives. How we see the lives around us. How we see God himself. There is a video, it talks about, or it's uh, by a group called the Skit Guys. Um, Trying to remember if there, it started off with a, a pair of them, and I think there's a few more, and I don't know if they're in it, but it talks about being thankful. So let us listen. Today I lift my eyes to the heavens and count my blessings. I think of all my needs that were met today. The clothes on my back. A place to lie down tonight. Nothing miraculous or earth shattering. Just the small things that help keep me going day after day. Thank you, God. I have food on my table, helped to get me through the day. Good memories I've shared. All the beauty that makes life special. Thank you, God. I'm blessed by what I can see and touch. What I can feel in the moment. But Lord, you transcend feelings and moments. You sacrificed your life so I could see beyond what's under my feet and over my head. <sighs> Thank you, God. That kind of love 
He's my heart for you. During seasons where peace is hard to come by, even when I can't see or touch a blessing, I know I can close my eyes and say, thank you, God. I, I've lost a lot this year. Things I worked hard for. Dreams I was sure were going to come true. People I never wanted to say goodbye to. I walked a hard path of trial. And pain and despair. But I never walked it alone. Even now, I can say thank you, God. Because no matter what is set before me, dark valleys or green pastures, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And when this life is over, I'll dwell with you in your house forever. So I just want to stop and tell you. Thank you, God. 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 Today, even as we come to Thanksgiving, there is a time that is a struggle for many. But there's always something to be thankful for. May we open our eyes to God's presence in our lives, to appreciate all that God has given us, to know that he never leaves us or forsakes us, but he invites us to walk with him through while the sun is shining or the storms are raging. He is our rock. He is our comfort. He is our steadfast love. Amen. Announcements and sharing. There is, a, I got information for the uh, luncheon that's coming up at the end of the month. And I put it into my, back, to my briefcase. So Kathy. <laughs> so on October the Wednesday, October the 30th, uh, we're having our next luncheon. It's a uh, hamburger macaroni and casserole with coke. And a cabbage salad, bun, and assorted cupcakes. Very good. Any other? No Bible study. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Or Thanksgiving's whenever you have it. Some of us are, or some are probably preparing as we're speaking. So, alrighty. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are always with us. Lord, we thank you that you challenge us to get outside of ourselves, outside of our, what we're used to. And that you invite us to walk with you, to follow you, to be led by you, to be lifted up by your strength. But more importantly, to see the beauty of life with you. For you are the creator of life. You are the one who has instilled the newness of life in us. You have given us each breath that we breathe. You have provided the earth to grow our food, the rain to nourish it, the sunlight to bring, to bring heat and warmth. No matter how hard we try, we can't make things happen the way we want it to. But we've learned to understand how you are at work in our lives, in our world and in all of creation. Help us, Lord, 
to truly walk with you. To not sit on the sidelines or to blaze our own trail. For when we try to do that, we grow weary and tired. But when we follow you and walk with you each day of our lives, we experience the fullness of your life and your grace. We experience the holiness that helps us to refocus, that helps us to see more clearly, that helps us to trust, and helps us to live in faith. Lord, we thank you for your promises that guide us and that call us in to be more than we think we are. Lord, we, we lift up to you today as a community of faith, those who are, who are struggling to heal from illnesses, those whose immune systems are, are struggling to, to deal with what some would say is, can be something very easy for others, but is very deadly for them. Lord, strengthen their hearts, their minds, their bodies, and their souls. May your Holy Spirit wash over them, filling them and renewing them. Lord, we pray for, for families that will be getting together. Lord, we pray for peace. Peace at the dinner table. Peace in the living room. Peace in the garage. Peace on the front lawn. May they each share and show lo your love to each other. And Lord, we pray for those who, who are not with their family this, this day. May they know that you are there with them. Bring them together with others that all might experience the bonds of your life-giving love. Lord, as we think about the devastation that has gone on in Florida, Lord, we pray for strength, strength to rebuild, strength to help to heal. Lord, we pray for patience, for things don't just happen overnight, but this will be a, a time and it will take, take weeks and months, maybe even years. For some it is rebuilding, for some it is to build something new. And Lord, we pray for your peace, your peace around the world, your peace in Sudan, your peace in Gaza, your peace in Lebanon, your peace in Israel and Iran, your peace in Ukraine and in Russia, peace between China and Taiwan, peace in our families, in our between our neighbors, peace in our country. Lord God, teach us to truly be thankful, to be agents of your peace, of your light, of your love and of your grace. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mission moment. November 26, 2023 was a day of great joy and celebration for the Pinuyamayan Church District, one of the indigenous groups of the Presbyterian Church in Taiwan. They gave thanks for 65 years of mission history and the publication of their very first New Testament translation into the lang language of their heart. It was the fruit of labor for the Penuyamayan Bible translation team and the Reverend Dr. Paul McLean, who worked on the project for eight years. Supported by Presbyterian sharing, Paul works with 12 Bible translation teams, persevering or preserving endangered indigenous languages, promoting literacy, 
and when the Bible is read, proclaiming the gospel. God has invited us to pour out his blessing into the world around us and into each of our lives. We are invited to share in God's riches and faithfulness as we give our tithes and offerings.
hearts, with hearts full of thanksgiving and praise, send us into the world to shine with the light of Christ into places where there is hurt, where there is trouble, where people need to know that they are not alone. Send us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you.